116, yeah. All right, we're going to count into the show. If I hit the right button, of course. That's oh, can I, I swear? Right... Sure. Yeah, you can swear. Okay. Good to know. <laughs> All right, we're rolling. All right, welcome to episode 116 of the Narcissistic Music Disorder. What's up, Scotty? A very special episode, and not like every time Every time we have a guest, I say it's a very special episode, and it always sounds like it's going to be one of those sitcoms where, you know, um, Jesse Spano takes uh, <laughs> takes some, um, you know, caffeine pills, or <laughs> or or Zach Morris and a Cal or no, who, which one was it? Was it Zach who crashed the car drunk? Lisa's mom's car. You guys don't care about that. That's I didn't watch by- that show. I was. You didn't old. watch Saved by the Bell. No, you were my too sister old. Didn't. I don't I think get it. Was joke. Zach? It wasn't Slater because no, no it Slater was, was the dude who didn't do it. It was Zach, and he blamed yeah. it on Kelly. Kelly took yes. the rap for him. I think. Okay. <laughs> See, Melissa what? knows. We young people know. Scott, you don't know. You're too old to know what we young hip people are into. You don't know Saved by the Bell. So, Scott, introduce our guest now that she's introduced herself with her vast knowledge of Saved by the Bell. So this is my friend, Melissa Dillon. Uh, we met, geez, it's been through Barrel Bones. She opened for oh, Barrel really? Bones. Yeah, yeah, that's when we met. And we bonded over Jimmy Eat World. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well. So that. then yeah. over the last, I don't know, decade of seeing her at gigs and talking to her, we've talked about pop punk all the time. Is that and... your in, Scott, with every new person you meet? Because <laughs> when you and I met, it was we talked about eight, the band Love Hate, I think. Right. The 80s band Love Hate. So what do you do? Is this your thing? that they like. That's <laughs> that you think in. they're going to like? Exactly. To get an in. So, so I, can yeah, you I make it creepier, Jimmy. though? Can you make that sound a little creepier? <laughs> I try to find some. I do my research before I run I'm into them. And, in. oh, exactly. God. I oh. notice you grocery shop at the same yeah. store every week. <laughs> well, I tried. I tried it in a store. A dude was wearing a bad flower shirt in a store yesterday. And I was like, hey, bad flower. And he's like, hey, thanks for noticing. And I'm like, the, on, oh, and start talking about bad flower with exactly me. the dude's like i just want to get my lettuce creeper and move on thank <laughs> you i love this shirt and but that's the thing nowadays too you can't do that shit that shirt stuff because cats they might not know the band stuff. dude there i at the school i'm at <clears throat> there are probably i don't know three or four kids who wear rock t-shirts like a kid will come in, in an iron maiden shirt and i'll be like dude sweet and i start in and the kid's like I don't know what this is. Like, I just like the skeleton guy. The skeleton guy's cool. Yeah. You know, right. A lot of, we get a lot of Iron Maiden shirts, which for me, I get all fired up about. I'm like, we're going to now, now finally, this kid who hates, you know, Mr. Merchant's going to really think I'm the grooviest dude ever by saying groovy. That's how I stay current. <laughs> yeah, um, you're doing it. You're doing yeah, so Yeah, I'm well. doing it. I know I'm doing it, Melissa. I'm fully aware <laughs> when I say groovy. You, you cats and kittens are really no I'm into the <laughs> vernacular of the, the day. No, oh, yeah, but yeah, yeah. They, they none of them know what they are. They like the logo, right? They like the designs yeah. and the scu- which is a whole other thing. But that's why your band merchandise. That's the ticket. I've never been good. At, well, that's not true. The glue, this the glue one I did. People seem to like. But yeah, if you got cool. a if you got a t shirt that people like just the look of, you're halfway there, man. Yeah, you're, that's why so many bands have that Jack Daniels logo one. You know the shirt I'm talking about. Skinner's got them. Johnny uh, right? Cash. Yeah. Yep. Johnny Cash. Melissa. Vallejo you're had that. one. Yeah. Pabst Blue Ribbon was big too. Remember, people have the Pabst Blue Ribbon, but it'd be their band. It'd be like Kung Fu Diesel on there. So, <laughs> all right. So, other things I need to say about Melissa. I have, um, again, I, I play some music from time to time. And I had the opportunity to actually play a gig on the same bill with Melissa. And I th- believe it was Melissa, myself, and who was the third? Was, it wasn't Ben De La Cor. No, Sarah Borges. No, it was no. Yeah, it was. Wasn't it for Sarah Borges? But wasn't it Pete? No, I I thought we did a Sunday matinee. Mal- yes, it was. Eh, maybe I'm wrong. No, We've it was some- It was Sarah Borges. I think. Well, at least one of them that I'm thinking of it was Sarah Borges, and Pete was there. Did I play like with Pete a band? Dunning played? Oh, maybe no. I, you no. you open. I think Pete was playing for Sarah. No, 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 I, I think no, what it Pete was did a barrel bones show. That's it what it was. Okay. Then barrel bones. Yep. You and I did something. I, I know you were there on a, 
I thought it was maybe it was Sunday liqueur. I that's what I thought it was. I thought it was, it was Sunday in February. I don't remember, but it was great. And I just remember I was really taken aback because I hadn't really heard you. I knew you had played, of course, very busy, um, very busy musician, always working, always doing something. Um, you're also big on, um, I see your name a lot. You host, you host a lot of events. You'll host like open mic nights um, and then do your own gigs. And then you have a band too, right? You Yeah, sometimes... I just started a band. <laughs> How, so, is like, that I restarted fun? a band. It is so incredibly encouraging. Like I've been in bands before and this is my favorite iteration of original music because like every person that I play with is so talented on so many different instruments and is very insightful in their own ways. And it feels a lot more collaborative than like previous bands that I've experienced. Um, but they're just like really genuinely good people who work really well together and they're so good that like, yeah, I am the least person, at least talented person in the room. And I always want to be that way, like, because there's always something to learn and there's always ways to improve. And I like to walk into a room and be in awe of the people that that choose to to make music with me. That's incredible. Yeah, that being the least talented person in the room has never been a struggle. <laughs> <laughs> Not just musically, but even, you know, just conversationally or the least socially awkward person in the room. I saw. I don't know about last that. Night. It was great. You yeah. saw what? Scott was Her there band last, last night. night. <laughs> oh, you went. Oh, killer. Yep. Fun. So, Where was that at? At the, the Stray. Stray. And you want to talk about socially awkward. Like, I, I think I might have you beat, John. Well, I think I might have you beat. It's, my, we'll it's kind of my to... thing to be weird we'll on a microphone. See. Oh, I'm not <laughs> Everybody's got to be good at something. It. You put a microphone yeah. in front of me. I'm like, hey, <laughs> I no, know. I, allow me to share too much and make you all very uncomfortable. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, that's what it's about. So, Scotty, <laughs> what's our topic today, sir? So the last time I saw Melissa's band at the Stray, I is when I asked her if I could play her song, Break Me, on the podcast. Yep. Yeah. And then she said, if you guys ever do a pop punk show, I want to be a guest. So, oh, I, so I have to blame her. Here we this. are. I yes, blame you her do. She throws Very me welcome. in. So these two, every, for everybody who follows our podcast, they, you know, you know, between Scott is the guy with, um, it, it's always, and Melissa, if you've ever listened to the show, it's. Scott is the guy who goes, hey, man, this jazz album from 1932 is the one I'm, I'm really rocking today. <laughs> and then I respond with like, man, this Billy Squire record's really cool, too. That's kind of our <laughs> dynamic. Um, I love it. So this topic for me, I I've been intimidated by shows before because I of my... There have been a couple. Remember, Scott, we've had a couple years where we were going to do a 90s thing. And I'm like, dude, I was so out of the yeah uh, even the almost the rock and show you were worried about as well very hard because yeah. i i felt just after you know when grunge music came out in the 90s i did i followed that for a little bit and, and played it in bands and cover bands and stuff and then about 92 or three i dropped right out i dropped uh, my friend todd long still tells the story that i said i i didn't like rock music anymore i i feel like <laughs> i feel like he's misquoting me i'm sure i said something to the effect of that that i just had stopped listening i listened to I a Tom. lot of a lot of country music and then i was deep 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 into um you know what now what now everybody's into it's amazing um but americana music at that yeah. time right um, and, and I got first wave of that. I tell the story all the time back in the 80s with uh, Jason and the Nashville Scorchers. And of course, I'm a Birds and Burrito Brothers guy and all that. So I fell out. Now, today, we're talking about pop punk music, which is, believe it or not, uh, all the hits that I have on my list. And they are hits, you guys. There's no, I'm not going to be able to benting one here. I'm <laughs> not going to be able to pull out. I don't know what pop punk in Scandinavia is like right now. But I'm sure <laughs> okay. Scott will pull out two records from two different bands from a section of the world you've never heard of. And he'll go, dude, I have their t-shirt. I've seen them in concert <laughs> 10 times. And I'll be like, I, I, yeah, I'll be like, have you guys ever heard of this band Green Day? That will be. <laughs> this so, is a, so this is a genre that 
is hard to define, hard to say, no, that's to this, or that's to emo, that's to... See, I'm going to get... That's to... He literally messaged me about this and I went on like a novel size tangent via like Facebook messenger. And I was like, listen, we have to define parameters because if we don't, we're, we're screwed. We're going to be in a 17 hour conversation that has absolutely no real end in sight because everything pop punk got lumped into emo now, like all the young kids. And yeah. you know, I can say that. Can I? Yeah. I'm, I'm going to be 40 this year. I can say the young oh. kids. So Go right ahead. I, I fall right between millennials and Gen X. Um, and I was in high school in my like formative years when you're really listening to like the music that stays with you. I had like two radio stations and sometimes could see stuff on TRL. So my exposure to pop punk at the beginning was just very everything mainstream, John, like you were saying, like singles yeah. and stuff, right? Um, but if you don't define the parameters, you're getting into, well, Jimmy Eat World, my favorite band ever. That's emo. Uh, you get into yeah. a, a day to remember, and that's like too heavy to be really pop punk. And like people put pop punk and emo and screamo and like scene music into one big category, and that's yeah. not fair. I have to stop you right there because my son, I have a 16 year old, and he mm -hmm. likes Jimmy Eat World. Oh, now, forgive me. I'm going to, uh, they're, the, they're the big cover tune. All the bands cover that big the hit, middle. right? It, the, middle. the middle. Yeah. Yeah. My son, I go, he asked me today, are you doing Jimmy Eat World? I go, no, I don't really know that song that well I hear. I've heard it. I bet I've heard that song a million times. And yeah. I've probably only heard Jimmy Eat World play it three times. But I've heard <laughs> a million cover bands play it. Yeah. Um, because it's, and it's a cool song, right? I know the video. I know the underwear video. Isn't there a video with people in their underwear? Everybody's Does jumping it sound up right? and down. Yeah. yeah. Like a like party. A house, yeah, a house Thank party, you. I think. Yeah. My son said that's emo. It is, is that emo? So it's it alternative. Is. So what's emo so, then? What is that emo, music? Like dashboard confessional, uh, yeah. secondhand That's... serenade, promise ring. Those I've kinds of things it. are emo. I've heard it the first time. I might have one on here. I'm, I <laughs> worry right now. One of these. <laughs> Don't be you guys, worried. You'll correct me when I get here because even I put this on my list because I love this band. I love this song. Um, I loved actually a couple songs from this band, but I thought their look was something. They may be goth. Is that a thing still? Yeah. They're okay, they're real goth. heavy. We'll get there. We'll get there. Yeah. We'll get there. We'll get there. So, What's the band? I'm not telling you until I get there. So when it's okay. my turn to talk, I'll tell you. I'll, as a matter of fact, <laughs> I'll name it, and I'll wait for one of you guys to go, oh, dude, that's that's. Well, I'm sure much. we'll check each other here, especially Melissa and I, as we well, go. Well, you guys so. can check each other, and I'll just occasionally chime in and we'll, go, uh, oh, that sounds yeah, that, like Night Ranger. Last night we're at the show and I should be out like talking to people and thank them for coming. And Scott and I are just like <laughs> eyeball deep into like, well, this doesn't count as this. And then what about these? And oh my gosh, have you heard this song? What about like I <laughs> it was, well, it was this so is much gonna, fun. This is gonna be a nerd fest. And we did for sure. we did kind of determine that Butch Walker is the uncrowned king of pop punk. Absolutely. Oh, thank God. Thank as God, an, as an artist, as a songwriter, as a producer, yes. now as a his producer, whole albums. Sure. Not the talking... music that he makes, but the right. songs he writes. Well, and... we'll we'll get to that. We'll get to that. Um, <laughs> so I, let's I, I let's start with our guest, Melissa. What's your first album? Which... Oh. I picked songs, by the way. I picked songs. Yeah, that's songs? fine. Okay, yeah, you... you can pick songs because, like, for me, if I were to pick songs, this would be yeah, an good. eight hundred day conversation. <laughs> um. I'm gonna I'm gonna come out strong with a lesson in romantics by Mayday Parade. Oh wow. So I've heard of that band. Uh Mayday Parade as of later has gotten more like alternative rock and emo and stuff. I really feel like a lesson in romantics uh sticks a little bit more truer to the pop punk, which Scott and I kind of defined last night so that we can have a baseline. Um major chord progressions are heavily involved. You have a high tenor, low alto voice. It's got a lot of attitude, a lot of chunks, a lot of like overdrive, but not quite distortion. Do we um, break a lot? I feel like that's a thing where it breaks a lot. Those tight I, yeah. kind of so punchy, like some da, like da, quick da, stops, da. like yeah, yeah, punchy. I would I would consider that yeah. Um, and I think that a lesson in romantics has all of those things and. 
A Lesson in Romantics is uh, only one of two albums in which Jason Lancaster was still uh, one of the vocalists. So they did like a Taking Back Sunday thing where they had uh, double vocals and, and a few pop punk bands do that still to this day, even I think We Are the In Crowd does it, but they have a male and female voice. Um, a Lesson in Romantics is like my favorite Mayday Parade album because it's got the most attitude. It stays the most true to those parameters. And I am forever fangirl of Jason Lancaster, his songwriting and his voice. But um, that whole album just top, like front to back. I can't say words. I get nervous. <laughs> uh, <laughs> think about, John, I don't know if you know. You it, don't know any like, old people stuff you can reference is what you're getting at. Can you I just tell don't me know what if it you was know like? This album. Of course I don't know this album. Of course I don't <laughs> know this album. Of Scott, course help me I out don't. here. Oh, Scott, give me an old guy reference that I can I'll appreciate. I don't know if I can describe someone. Oh, yeah, else you. Why voice. would I ask you? Why yeah. would I ask you for any <laughs> okay, reference? Okay, so it's I'm got be... it's got the attitude of pop punk, right? It's got a lot of like crushed scorn lover stuff going on which is okay. also a very common songwriting theme common with thread. pop punk music also okay. you know disrespecting parents and saying fuck you a lot like but nice. without actually saying fuck you because a lot of the pop punk like goes back to before we were allowed to swear on songs that were on the radio you know yeah uh, cool. so they would just find clever cleverer and cleverer ways to say fuck you basically whether it's to a relationship a friend a parent a system you know, um, so a lesson in romantics is like it's scorned lover music, but it's set to really sick beats, really, really great guitar tones and two different vocalists who have a very, very different style, but somehow managed to like blend that together. Um, right. And it's got like wow. the song Black Cat would be, John, your example of the lots of stops. It's weird to like sing those songs and not have any type of reference <laughs> for the people listening. Um, I'm I'm a huge fan. And then they even go like their softer like piano song. There's a song Miserable at Best. And it's actually like a breakup song, but it's like from the point of like, I'm still in love with you. And it's I it's perfect. It's perfect. That's my that's my first album that I picked. What you got, yeah. Scotty? I have from I believe they're from California, a band called Ten Foot Pole. Uh, they're yeah, nineteen ninety nine. <laughs> they're John, are you dead already? <laughs> it should literally be like googling these bands and seeing how many. I have tabs so. pulled up on Google right now, so I can reference track listings if I get nervous. Their uh, their album nights from nineteen ninety nine, I think, called Insider, is awesome. Um, it's that it's that uh, typical California sound with the guitars and the drums. I think it's a Fat Records band. Um, they they used to be called God. What were they called? Um, oh, they were called Scared Straight before they were Ten Foot Pole. They were just straight ahead punk then. That was from like eighty three to ninety three. They were scared. Oh wow! And then they changed their name and they put out a bunch of records as Ten Foot Pole. Um, I can't remember their first one. I think Rev maybe is their first one. That one's really good, but Insider was one of my favorites. It had the the typical law enforcement against law enforcement. There was a song on that record called um, Officer, I Swear She's 19. Um, oh my God. Just, yeah, typical pop punk. Oh. <laughs> uh, cat, uh, uh, what do you call it? Yeah, just fodder. So. I have a question. I, I, I'd like to ask you a question about this pop punk thing. Are, do these bands ever, are they ever like harder core punk bands that go poppier? And then if yes, that's this the band case, was. if that's the case, do their fans, their core fans go, you know, is it like making the Black Album for Metallica? Are people like, oh my God, this yes. band sold out and now we'll they're pop punk? We'll get to that. Punk. We'll okay. get yeah. to that with one of these. <laughs> I'm okay. already like holding my breath about yeah. it. One okay, the, good. One of the good. things you you don't know yet, John, and that's it's good. I'm I'm happy that you don't know it is that pop punk fans are some of the most bloodthirsty people on the planet who will crucify you if you say the wrong band. And I was so excited to do this podcast and then immediately terrified that I was like I'm going to lose so many friends by simply stating an opinion of of a pop punk album that I think is great. And it's it's like um the it's like the Jimmy Eat World fans that tell you that Clarity is the yeah. only and best album ever. 
but like I didn't know about Jimmy World until Futures came out and then I went backwards. So like I got scorned for not thinking Clarity was the best album. Dude, this is in the title of your podcast. This is narcissistic. This is purely opinion. Yeah. And I'm well, I'm calling a whose line is it anywhere where the points don't matter. So hopefully I don't lose too many friends, but also like people like what they like. We Right. We we do hold true to that here. Uh, that people like what they like and, and you know you're you, you kind of do what you, what you do and the other thing is we've never been too big on how obscure you can be i mean scott's obscure because that's his listening and that's what he truly listens to but yeah. you know i i don't really give a shit about bands you've heard one time or you you know what i mean and you're right. like oh this is a cool band to name check because I know nothing about this genre other than the biggest bands of your genre of the, of this music that yeah. you guys love. I only know the biggest bands. Yeah. And give us I your will, single. And the thing I like about them is um, the poppy part, the punk mm -hmm. part and to me, no offense to you guys or the fans. There's very little punk to this to me, but punk to me is different than punk to even eighties punk stuff. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't hear a whole lot of socially conscious stuff. I don't hear a whole lot yeah. of um, true, you know, working class rebellion, which is what, you know, the stuff like the Clash and the Buzzcocks yeah. and, and the Pistols and and even to me, the Dolls, you know, that. So for me, I like the pop side. I like the pop side of the pop punk. So to me, um, I'm trying to think of like the first pop punk band I would have known, right, that I would have heard of. And I guess for me, and you guys can tell me these guys are not pop punk, but the the kind of band that put a lot of this on the map for me was Green Day. Is that correct? Were they oh, like one absolutely? Of the early... This so... is the one that people hate because they think they sold out because they were punkier before Dookie. Well, they and let me tell you this: they were the Dookie. Is Dookie did it have the big hits? The when I come around, the past yeah. yep. and all that, right? That's what, that's so, exactly the again. One. I, I use these guys like I use um um what's the other band the uh, the White Stripes oh god what happened <laughs> can you guys hear me right now yeah 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 okay we're gonna I'm gonna I don't think I can pause this video. But we just lost the audio side of this. Okay. The um the Pro Tools section of this. So hold on one second. Talk about pop punk to each other. Um, <laughs> Heard that. And then I'll bring you back into the show. Okay. Yeah. All right. Talking did about you, pop did, punk. Did you know Ten Foot Pole? <laughs> I've heard of them, but I don't know them. And I again, I, I really think it's just like the the age gap of when like music was really yeah. available to me in droves versus what I was exposed to on top 40 radio so, or like classic rock kind of stuff that, that was available to me before I like left big rapids. When you lived in big rapids was radio Kilroy there? No. The, the record store. No. Okay. No. Um, thank you. My son's dropping food off to me. It's so <laughs> kind of him. <laughs> Um, no, they weren't. There was, uh, there's probably a shoot. lot of used stuff being by a college campus. Yeah. And there was, um, a record store, but I cannot remember the name of it now. And then it closed probably right after I graduated high school, but they used to like give out free CDs that weren't selling. They would like cut a hole through the UPC yeah. and then hand you the CDs. And that's how out. I found uh, Robbie Williams, of all people. That's how I found Lucky Boy's Confusion, which is not on my list, but still worth noting, like, great pop punk band. Um, a, a lot of the music that I discovered was, like, the free bins at the CD store. Yeah. <laughs> like, it was good nope. stuff. Um, no, Dookie was great. And I, I remember really loving Dookie. And that was, what, 1994? Yeah. Four. Release date, February 1st, 1994. So I was actually still living and growing up in Las Vegas and on my way to moving to like Big Rapids, Reed City area. Okay. So when Green Day came out, I was still able to like be exposed to it because I was in a bigger city with just more opportunity to listen to more music. And right, I remember guys, that album. 
Hey, yeah. um, I got you guys back here. So what had happened is uh, the Pro Tools computer had lost power a second. So I'm going to find oh. out where we were at. All right. And what typically happens here is I'm able to really kind of edit the audio portion of this and see where we're at. So give me one Is second. Is that good to eat a sandwich while we're doing this? For sure. For sure. <laughs> <laughs> punchier just... before Dookie. Well, okay. So the last thing is, yep. Scott, you said they were punkier before Dookie. Okay. You were talking to me. Yep. And we're just going to roll into that. So you'll kind of hear yourself say they were punkier before dookie and i will answer that question and we will keep rolling okay okay this is where the video portion of the show this is the uncut stuff this is the <laughs> director's cut the gold oh the real, this is gold stuff yeah and i really don't care i mean i could go no, edit video either. but why why am i gonna do that i think that this is like, like that would be fun. like naming off poser bands i like yeah All right this is the All deluxe right. edition that's fine this is exactly <laughs> this will be in our box set hold on <laughs> Uh, let's see. So Scotty says that. All right. You say something about uh, Dookie. Hold on. Yeah. All right. Here we go. You know what? I'm not even going to fancy this shit up. You're so fancy. Mm -hmm. You are All right. Now. So Scott, uh, we had a, a little dropout, so we'll see what it does in the audio of the show. But we were just talking about Green Day because uh, I brought them up. Scott had said they were a little punkier before Dookie, correct? Yes. And, and this is one that the fans get fussy about that were the fans of the long. genre or the fans of Green the Day. The fans of Green Day that when they it's like REM, you know, a lot of people are like, Oh, I don't like anything after green. Oh, so what's or, the green? I don't like anything, you know, I like or up to Weezer. Green and that's it. Everyone or does Weezer. the same thing to Weezer. Ugh. My that's my son's favorite band. Weezer is my son's favorite band. Um, let me ask you guys this then. So it, it, with so Green Day's punkier before Dookie, right? And then Dookie comes out. And what I was talking about too was um the fact that uh I use Green Day as like I do the white stripes for like up and coming guitar players. It's the those riffs are the smoke on the waters of yeah. those generations, right? So Green Day, the, when I come around and stuff, right, yeah. all five chords really easy to play. So within the Green Day fan community, you guys can say this. Did they take even more heat as they went on and became even more refined? Yeah. Because I know this Absolutely. isn't even I know this isn't pop punk, but the tune by them I like the most is that 21 Guns tune. That's great. I think that's, that's a great, great song. Jam. I love um, I love the band. I mean, even the new stuff that um, Butch Walker produced um, my is dude. great. But I really think that 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 Billy Joe Armstrong dude um I think after he kind of got himself straightened out, I think he's maturing quite well. Those, I do. Those guys are a combination of The Clash and Stiff Little Fingers, a band from <laughs> okay. Ireland. Yeah, yeah, I know Stiff Little Fingers for sure. Um, Yeah, so I like that 21 Gun song. I heard that, although I like all those early ones, the Basket Cases and, you know, the the hits. Yeah. I like all those. But the the non, like Burnout the is a great song from that record, and it's not a hit. Um, yeah, and I wouldn't know it. I sure wouldn't it's, own. I think it's Green track Day. one, maybe something like. Yeah, I yeah burnout, the burnout is track one. Yeah. So, um, all right. Well, so that's Paradise was really great too, but they had a video for that, so I guess that counts as a single. Yeah, and I, I don't think I ever saw that. I, I I heard this. You know, I've heard of the handful of tunes. I heard the American Idiot tune, the Twenty One Guns, uh, all those Dookie Wake me hits. Up when September ends, all those. I like that yeah. tune a lot too. I actually like so, that tune a lot. Well, that was another thing that we were discussing about parameters is that pop punk doesn't follow the punk side when it comes to song structure, right? It's a, it's a bit more verse, chorus, verse, chorus, bridge, chorus, which is a very typical structure for a pop song, pop song which is yeah. why it makes it a little easier to digest than regular punk music, right? Which also reminds me of I Want to Be Sedated, The Ramones. That I believe in my head would be the first pop punk song that I've heard because it follows all of those things. It has the the chunkies. It's got the overdrive. It's got the major chord progression. It's got the pop song structure. Got and, the key I mean, change. The key change yes. is huge. There was yes. that was um, even 21 Guns. The song I just mentioned does that, you know, modular. That's a real poppy thing. Yeah. It's And that comes from, you know, back in with crooners, even in the 50s. Um, 
in the 60s, you would modulate because you would highlight the singer's ability to switch to the the higher keys. They did it throughout the 70s and pop music and and country music even was big at that time. I mean, songs even going back to the 50s, you know, Johnny Cash, um, you know, uh, I Walk the Line, the modulation, the continue. Mm -hmm. it, it, it Those are pop things that highlight singers. You know, yeah. that was the thing right. you could go. Holy shit. They're going even higher now on this one. We did it in hair metal, too, with those hair metal singers. So what do you got next, Melissa? Oh, I thought it was Scott's turn. No, nope, you're next. It's, you're next it's my rotation. turn. I got to um, get my cat off of my lap. Sorry. She wants <laughs> it. My cat's decided she's going to invade. Um. OK, that cat I've knows more about, about pop punk than I do. She <laughs> probably knows more about it than I do. My cat's smarter <laughs> than everyone. Um. OK, it's a toss up. It's the same band, but I've been like going back and forth with this one in my head. It is Blink-182, but my toss up is between Dude Ranch and Enema of the Enema State. Enema of the State, yeah. So, OK, so a, a lot of people would pick Enema of the State and me being a little more exposed to mainstream pop punk during my formative years. Like that's that's how I was introduced to it. I'm going to know a lot more mainstream stuff, right? Enema of the State, much more mainstream than Dude Ranch was. But Dude Ranch. I actually did listen to when it was first released and was just so it was angry, but it was melodic and it was like, fuck you. But it was also like princess Leia, where are you tonight? Like <laughs> there are so many fun things about that album. And I just remember, I think it's more of a um, nostalgia thing for me, like how I was living my life and how I was feeling at the time that I was exposed to that album. Enema of the state, probably more pop punk. Yeah. Then Dude Ranch. Dude Ranch is probably just more a little punk. And it didn't have I don't think Travis Barker was the drummer for them during Dude Ranch. Um but so like, is Dude I, Ranch is that like an early one? Is that's that like one of their first the ones? Hit? That's the one that has damn it. Dan and Dan and Dan. That was in um uh mm, the huh? American Pie movie, I think. Oh I think so. That would make sense. Yeah. So yeah. what's the one is is Enema of the State? Is that the big hit one? It, does that With have all um, the small things? All the small yeah. things. Yeah. I'm trying to see if what's I, my I, age I don't again? have them. Yep. Yeah, I don't have them on my list, but in my pluses, my extras, I do have them written down because that would have been another one that I hear uh, a lot. You know, you'd hear covered. My son likes it. My son's school band played. Um, they played a Blink One Eighty Two song in there, like band and i can't think of what it, i think it's all the small things so yeah that yeah. would be on animal of Probably. the state yeah yep they were kind of too they took didn't take themselves super seriously i always no. like that you know i like and when travis everybody loves travis barker as a drummer i think he plays that stylistically he's he sounds like pop punk to me you know yeah, even yeah. his drum sound his the way he plays my son you know again i reference him because he's young and into this stuff but it's that that kick pattern you hear a lot of. Pop punk drummers are so underrated. Like, man, Travis Barker had the hardest job at the When We Were Young Festival. He's out there drumming for every fucking band. Um, like pop punk drummers are a league of their own and need way more credit than they're given. I would period. Agree. I would agree with that. All right, Scotty, what do you got next? <laughs> oh, Falcon here we go. Five O. The band Falcon 5.0, um, their album is called The Manual for Hard Living. Uh, you lost 90, me. I don't even know who that is. I'm oh, fine. See, welcome to my world. And you love this genre. <laughs> and do. welcome oh. to my world. This is Scott. This is, he'll like do it. this on hair metal for me. He does they're this hit. to me all the time. <laughs> their, their big song for me that I like, they have a couple. One is called Dirty Hot Girl. Um, you probably know that one, dirty hot girl, dirty hot girl, love me tonight. That one, um, and it sounds then they like something a, from my era. They have a song that sounds called, like it's, um, it should be a hair metal song, honestly. Right. It's really like a one called song. Work's Not Working Out for Me, and that's a freaking <laughs> awesome song. <laughs> that's a great title. About, yeah, it just says, like, um, uh, mom and dad were full of shit when they told me that I could be anything, work's not working out for me. <laughs> I could quit my job, but I'll hate the next one. <laughs> so it's oh, yeah, I love it's, it. It's a killer. I, um, that song you, speaks to my heart. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that's universal for sure. That's a universal that's, message. That's me as a human. Thank you. Yeah, uh, Rock and Five O. I have two of their albums. I don't know much about them. I don't even know if you can find it on YouTube. <laughs> well, oh, I of course it's a, a Benting tune. I'm, of course, you can't find it on YouTube. Um, I'm gonna try. 
I am going to start. I'm going to cram some of my singles in together here um, because I um again, big singles. I fallout boy. Do you guys count them? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So I like that sugar. We're going down tune from under the yes. court tree. Yep. Yeah. I think that's a great jam. I, I remember yep. seeing the video. I remember. I also remember liking the singer dude who was uh, chunky at the time and looked, Patrick a, Stump. Little, looked a little out of they place. Don't, um, that was cool. They don't yeah. stay in that genre, but that record no. was pop punky. Yes. Yeah. I liked that tune. And then I'm going to go on to another band that I sort of heard around that time, I think. And these might all be the same time. Maybe they were all out about the same time. This was a band I wondered about because of their look. But is Good Charlotte still pop punk to you guys? Yes. Unfortunately. Okay. Sorry. I don't like them, but yes. I don't either. Well, and, and you can fight amongst five. yourselves. But I like that Lifestyles of the Rich and Famous too. I thought that was cool. One of Lifestyle. my old bands used to cover that. Yep. Um, I thought that's a great tune because it, it, it's pretty. It's the only thing they did is, um, which we all do. Is it's it's dated, right? Talks about Johnny mm -hmm. Cochran yeah. and stuff like that. That yeah. kids they have no idea about. But um, the it's got that kind of that same kind of poppy punk thing that I like, yeah. and um, and I liked how those two the what are they the Maddens? Is that right? Is that their last yes. name? I feel yes. like it is. Yep. Those two dudes kind of sang together. Okay, they had those big choruses. They I remember thinking when I saw it, what blew me away is the kid on guitar, whoever he is, the lead guitarist was playing a Paul Reed Smith, and I thought, wow, that's really not. Punk, you know, back in the day, punk bands played shitty instruments, you know, or real hearty fenders and stuff. And this dude had a boutique model guitar, uh, uh, which Paul is Reed really Smith. funny because a lot of like local players um, that are in similar genres are all playing PRSs. And I wonder if like that mainstream like video exposure, they were sure. like, what guitar is this? Can we yeah. do this with it? I know yeah, so that's... many people with PRSs, and I'm like, yeah, this that's is not what... what I would be see befitting of the same of that genre as well. But yeah, it, but those dudes dude, had it, it, and they got famous too. Like one of them, they married famous people, I think. Yeah, Cameron Diaz and Shut Hilary up. Duff and somebody God. else. They've they've had multiple marriages, but yeah. There you go. All um, right, those I, were my two. I always feel like uh, I can't. Why do you guys remember... hate that? Good because Charlotte? he sounds like a drunk toddler when he's singing. Like, it was fine with Green Day sounding like a Midwestern person trying to have a Valley person accent that's also trying to cover up their Midwestern accent. Like, that's how I <laughs> felt like Billy Joe Armstrong always sang, right? But, like, uh, Good Charlotte just seemed really, like... Uh, I don't... I feel bad doing an impersonation of it, but... Um, I just... I, I just... The, the, the anthem, throw all your hands up. They sound like toddlers who are also drunk and i i don't know something well it's an affectation on my on. nerves they yeah. it's an affectation a lot of these voices i mean i can do the pop punk voice i can hear it in my head right now um yeah. there's there's definitely a lot of that there's a lot of that uh manufactured snottiness you know yeah and some bands just do it better than others i think maybe sure. good charlotte actually sold me on the snottiness and they were like we're gonna fake snottiness so much that you're actually gonna hate us for it yeah. just it's a personal opinion you can like what you like but like ugh, well I'm not yeah. let me tell you this if i'm getting in the car after this i'm definitely not putting on good charlotte but <laughs> i remember i remember this song it seems like they were in an empty swimming pool or maybe in jail all right so uh melissa, melissa uh, is this melissa what do you got next I feel bad. I've been talking a lot, but I also don't feel bad because like I'm really getting into this conversation and I really <laughs> appreciate the discourse. Um, OK, so I ooh, do I go with the one that I know is going to like lose all of my friends or do I save that for later? Actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to lump three into one right now for you yep. because I um, my old band, it was called Romance for Ransom. Some of the songs will qualify as pop punk. Some of them qualified as like alternative rock. Thank you. I'm proud of that one. Um, but we were fortunate enough to play with some really cool people that I am to this day even working with. Um, and I have three examples, uh, two are EPs and one is a, a full length of like local pop punk artists that I, I just want everybody to know about. Um, there is a band called Maybe Next Time. And um, my buddy, Matthew, um, I'm actually working with him later today to go do songs with uh, the album is called Nothing on the Surface. And like, 
front to back, classic pop punk, really good on the vocals. The tone is right on the guitar. It's got the little chunky things that you like on the drums, John. It's tasteful, tasteful pop punk. Um, and then I got buddies, uh, their band is called Midwest Skies. And I'm also working with them later this year too. Um, the EP Wish You Were Here. They have a lot more releases than any of the other bands uh, locally that I was mentioning, but uh, Midwest Guys just goes for it. And they also have the two singer deal. So they like tied that in, got all the like classic elements of the pop punk things. But then they also have some really cool modulated, like their, their production is, it's just showing of like maturity that you don't really get in a lot of the earlier pop punk stuff. Um, and then my friends are, are the, my friend Josh used to be in a band called The Better Fight, which is a little bit more hard, technically pop punk, but then it it went like more day to remember style with like the metal breakdowns and the screaming and stuff like that. So I'm not counting that band. I'm going to go with uh, Years Later is the name of the band. And they've put out a few EPs, the one that I think follows the most like classic pop punk style as far as like the pop melodies with that like accented voice i'm gonna call it accented yeah um because it's almost midwest but it's not but then it's almost like socal whiny and then it's not anyway whatever that pop punk accent is josh has it like in spades the ep is called lush and maybe that's just more of like a shameless plug for my friends who are really talented <laughs> but i will also say all three of those eps and albums are on repeat like i am not taking my whole list is stuff that I listen to daily. Like yeah, cool. daily yeah. is ingrained in my brain. So like it, shameless as it may seem, like I actually listen to these albums because they're my friends. And then like so much cooler when you know the band that you're listening to and you're like, oh my gosh, I remember when that song came out. I remember when we played that show together and you played this. Like it's, I don't know. I love them. I will always have a special place in my heart for those three bands. Yep. Killer. Scott, what do you got next? I'm going to lump a couple of foreign bands together. John, you... <laughs> told you. From, I told from you. From Australia, the you, band you did Body me. Jar. Uh, Body Jar called? is like a punky Jimmy Eat World, but Australian. Sounds goth, though. That's like a yeah, goth really name. Uh, the album How It Works is the one I dig. Um, and then the band from... I think there's from... Oh, I don't remember which Norwegian country they're from, but they're called Mill and Colin. I literally called that. You totally called, called that. that. Told you. What was the band, Scott? Sorry. Mill, Mill and Colin. And okay. the nope. album is called Penny Bridge Pioneers. Um, I guess the the name of the town they're from is means Penny Bridge in their language or something like that. So hmm. but <laughs> their that's language. Like cool. <laughs> That's a super killer record. The lead singer plays bass. Uh, they have songs about girls, songs about motorcycles. Um, they do have one kind of ballady song about a, the kid from school who nobody likes and gets picked on and has to take his mom to prom. That's kind of a sad song, but oh my god, um, yeah. But uh, wow, but Mill and Colin has other great records like Milkwood and um, or yeah, a bunch of other cool stuff so yeah mill and colin and yeah you called it john my foreign bands so i love it i he love it i count said on said norwegian and you i count it on out. you i count on him for that i mean i after i don't what was this this is episode what scott 116 116 I, if we do i'll tell you what i'll tell you right now we do a country or americana episode scott's gonna be heavy on texas is that am i lying He's no a big fan of texan music and all his other music comes from the corners of the earth, from the corners <laughs> of the earth. If we, we are visited by like aliens, you, Scott, how would we yes, know? We how Scott would we is know? the guy who exposes us to, to the new stuff. And if we're visited by aliens, Scott's first thing will be like, hey, man, I'll, I'll buy your record before you guys leave. <laughs> and that's that. what I like about you. You always support that. And I mean, I owe you. I owe you for so much. I still owe you for. um for Gaslight Anthem. I still owe you for that and American Aquarium. So I'm all forever in your debt. Um, I'm going to put a bunch together in the interest of time and here we go and you guys can tear them apart as you see fit. How much do you, the pop punk people, how much do the pop punk people hate Avril Lavigne? A lot? 
I, they don't hate her. She just doesn't qualify. Her singles, some of them would totally qualify. Her What's is, Skater uh, Boy. Like, and What's Skater, skater Boy? Boy would be Skater Boy. I would I would consider pop punk. That's but the that's only like, song I know by her. Okay. What does she have other songs? I'm sure she does. She has a a lot of other like songs. Like a lot Actually, of hit songs. Some, yeah, some it that hits. are even bigger yeah. than that. And she became a lot more famous, um, like in Japan and internationally than she is in the wow. United States, which she's Canadian. She's so Canadian, like, right? Yeah. Yes. Butch Walker so produced like, a bunch of her stuff. Yeah. Yes. There we go. Butch Walker again. Yeah. MVP so I, of pop punk forever. I really um I, I liked that tune when it came out. Um, I liked the, the Bowling for Soup tune, the 1985 tune that hit lived with me. They their played cover, down at, they played their cover down, of, uh, Summer of 69 is great too. They played yeah. at like, um, Zars in St. Joe. I remember that. I remember they played down there at that bar and I feel like maybe I, I might've been there or maybe someone I know played Bowling for Soup. Yeah. So did um, Falcon 5 That's where I saw see, Falcon 5 that's, cool. oh, that's crazy. Oh, uh, Bowling uh, for Soup. Just I want to be their friend. Like they just seem like cool people they're a good that hang, I could like they? hang out with. Yeah, they're a good I hang love them. Event. They're yep. a great band. So I did my Skater Boy in 1985. Um, do you guys uh, remember that Eve Six song, "Kick Some Ass"? That's my favorite. Th that's, that was on um, Stroke Nine. Oh shit! No, are you sure? I'll take yeah, that Eve action. Six is um I would swallow my pride, I would choke on uh, but that's yeah. not pop what? punk. No. No, no, I'm talking about the kicks how many people want to kick so yeah, that's stroke, that stroke nine. nine. Yeah. Yeah, it's one of those number bands for sure. So that <laughs> number band, whatever had that song. I like that number song there. Um, did you ever hear Little Black Backpack by Stroke Nine? Because uh, yes. that was their I other single. Like, I feel like I did. Don't want to like tangle with you. I want to tangle with him. Da, 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 bash his head in. Yeah. That's... Uh, I, are they pop yeah. punk or not? You guys no. don't count them. What are, no, are but those easy. songs. You don't have to get militant. No, he said. I told no, you no. Bloodthirsty. They're pop. Easy. They're poppy. They're, they're poppy. poppy. Yeah. They're adjacent. So if they're poppy, then what's Taylor Swift? Pop. Straight up. And pop. Without the e. Then what's the nine band? What are they? Poppy what? They're like alternative like poppy yeah. alternative like God, pop rock shame on you yeah <laughs> i told you bloodthirsty See? they are you guys are that way aren't you we we said last night um that the fans of this genre can be described as a word that rhymes with runty yes <laughs> yeah. yeah right yes well <laughs> that's yeah. good i, I you know sure. what they can come over to my house if they want <laughs> i suppose and we it's can fine. we can rumble over one of the number bands um <laughs> And so what did I have there? Yeah. What do you got next, Melissa? I got, ooh, okay. State champs. Okay. I am a huge fan of state champs. Like I, the the audio version, you can't see me with my hands in the air, but uh, state champs forever. Such a great pop punk band. He has that perfect, perfect high tenor voice that gets that like nasal without being too overwhelmingly annoying. Their drummer is Walking phenomenal and their melodies are super pop driven but like with that like crunchy overdrive and it's oh okay state champs love them one of my favorite bands uh the album i picked is around the world and back um they get a couple of like cutesy ballady things in there there's um a duet in there i can't remember the girl's name but it's it's fantastic the song all you are is history like anytime i'm in a bad mood and it doesn't even have to be like related to a relationship because it is a relationship song um it, i will crank that like oh it's got it's got this thing there's a there's a type of melody that i'm trying to figure out the definition for where you are let's say you're playing uh the key of c and you go f sorry you go a minor f c g so you're on like what the fourth or fifth and then you're like singing a cascading melody down. Um, they do that a lot in a lot of these songs and it's catchy for whatever reason becomes an earworm. And I I can point out a hundred songs that have the same like interval exchange, but um, Sea Champs just does it so well. And it's so polished that it like feels new every time you listen to it. It gets me so fucking energized. Um I'm done because I've I've gone on too long about this. Anyway, Around the World and Back is is the album for, that I'm picking from them. Although I would pick any of their albums, hands down. Scott, what do you get next? Okay. I have 
from and I'm not familiar with that band, so I'm gonna check them out. So um I have a number band, some 41. I'll kill no. her filler. Good. Good. I, I remember those guys. They yeah. count? They count? You're not Would counting count? my nine band, but you're counting those guys? Yeah, but I like, kind Fat of count Lip them. Is, Fat Lip is but totally. got a little harder and a little less like poppy, but right? They're they were covering Motley Crue songs. Come kind on. Rappy. Oh man, yeah. Scott, you're gonna hold me to the no. take me to test no, for my boys. Is that is that to see? This is <laughs> again, this is personal opinion, and I'm not gonna fight you because I I didn't like some 41, so I didn't really get what was super their hit deep song, into Scott? them. Fat what lip. The, well, how did that go? Do you remember? Uh, uh, rapping. There was rapping. Dan, my own dan, dan, party dan, dan, nobody dan. came. Yeah. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I remember those guys. Yeah. I mean, so. Kind of. They also yeah, covered like back in high school. Something, something, yeah. something, 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 something. Reality. Yep. That yep. song. Yeah. What is the fucking chorus? I don't want to waste my time. You come in the ca- Okay. Yeah. That yep. song maybe, but yep. that album yeah. as a whole, I don't know that I consider that album pop punk. Taking my stroke nine personal song. Personal opinion. Back, Scott. <laughs> Taking it back. Yeah, I know. Personal it's... opinion. You're so hurtful to me about um, my favorite band, band, Stroke Nine. Was similar to I, I think. Um, they're called Phoenix TX. They're from yes. Texas. Sorry. Oh, um, I've heard of that band for some reason. They used to be called River Phoenix, but they got a cease and desist from his family. So they changed, that checks out. They changed their name to Phoenix TX. Their album, they had two albums. Um, the first one, I can't remember what it's called. The second one is called Lechuza, which is Spanish for Barn Owl. <laughs> um, Rock and roll, yeah, man. Right. But that record is Just Spanish fantastic. from Barn Owl. Um, Threesome was a, the single, I think, released from that record. They had a song called Phoebe Cates, which was on the American Pie soundtrack, one of them. I've heard that song, I think. Um, I think Scott, like the lead singer, yeah. It's um, Phoenix TX had a self-titled album. Yep. Um, they had one called River Phoenix. They had the, what did you just say it was? Lechuza? Lechuza. Le- yeah, that one. Um, there's one called Purple Rain and Blood. And then there's one called Creep, but Creep is separated with a period, so it looks like Cree EP. Yeah, those um, are EPs, yep. <laughs> yeah. I'm just Googling. I just want to be the, as smart as you like someday. the Purple Rain and Blood is killer, man. <laughs> so good. So metal. Yeah, the those two EPs are just uh, stuff from the first record. And then, gotcha. um, yeah, the... They have weird like song titles. They have like Fallout Boy has weird song titles. These guys do. They have a song called like Apple Pie Cowboy Toothpaste. <laughs> like Fallout Boy has um, you know, Stay Frosty Milk Tea and songs right. like that. You know, it's weird. But um, so those guys and yeah, I think I don't know what happened. I saw him live. I think Will Salazar, the singer, had a stroke like 10 years ago. That's sad. And, yeah. And they had a new singer for a little while when they went out and did the warp tour with another guy for a little while, hoping that Will was going to recover. But I haven't heard anything in a while about whether he did or not. But yeah, I loved Phoenix TX. Um, and um, yeah. So. All right. Well, I'm going to throw in the interest of time. I'm going to lump a few together um, and let you guys tear me apart. <laughs> um here you know what i said i wouldn't say so i'm gonna go first uh, and this is a killer tune i don't know what the genre is but it's a killer jam dirty little secret by all american rejects yes that's a great i would call that pop punk i wouldn't call them as a band pop punk or any of their albums but i could i could see that song that's a great song that's a great and and it truly for me the only reason i would know any of these songs um, is just because they caught my ear as good songs that I could dig into, and I really like that. Very, they had another tune I liked too, and I can't think of what it was called. Was it was it a flavor single. of the week. Was that them? No, flavor no. of the week was. Uh, I can't remember. She's just the flavor of the week. She makes me weak. I can hear that right now. But well, I yeah, don't that. Yes. Yeah, did. you can hear that. Um, yeah, there was another All American Rejects tune I like. Oh, um, oh, that was American Hi Fi. Five. <laughs> American Hi-Fi, yeah. Move Along is the song I was thinking oh, of. Yeah. Oh, Thank a, yep. know, yeah, yeah. That's a great So I like album. that tune. I'm going to add... Um, This is a killer 
Nobody talks about these guys. They may have broken up or whatever. But that Take It Off song by the Donnas. Oh, yeah. We talked about uh, them last night. <laughs> yes, we did. We actually did. So what did you two? We talked about last night. What did you guys gatekeep on them? Did you guys say they were passable or not? They don't qualify. That, and no, tell me why. Sorry. Songs tell me why. would. Some Take of their so- singles you keep would. Songs would. But uh, yeah, you guys are doing albums. Right. I'm doing singles. So I guess maybe yeah. that was their pop punk single. Um, yeah. 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 Okay. They're, yeah. I, to me, the Donnas are more punky than they have more of the punk side of things than Green Day. Right, but then they don't really follow the the pop singer, pop song structure, and like you tonality of the pop punk genre. You right? think so it's too? So it's like more punk, indie, indie punk. punk. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Indie punk. Okay. <laughs> Gatekeeping. I'm just trying to. You Good know what night. I'm trying to do? I'm trying to narrow punk. down the amount yeah. of music that I listen to. I promise I'm yes. not gatekeeping um, so, for any um, other reason than time. Yeah, uh, that tune. Okay. I'm going to say their pop punk song. I like that song. Okay. Um, This song is, pro- you guys are definitely not going to let this one slide. I can tell already. <laughs> um, But I love this song. And maybe this isn't a pop punk band either, but I like that teenagers song by My Chemical Romance. Mm. Okay. This I'm literally okay, wearing tell me a My Chem shirt. Can you, can you see this? It is a My Chemical Romance shirt. So right tell me what they are. Are they emo or goth or something else? They are they the are above. emo alternative rock entertainment they are they, they are a class of their own um, I, also I think like teenagers that. would qualify as a pop punk song but i, I like Mike that Hannah helena tune band. too that helena right. tune so i really good. like too okay forever so, a fan of my chem but i don't really qualify them that song then, would count can i count that song then okay you're giving yes. me that song uh, i'll give so you the song you, but not the band the band is not <laughs> are you guys gonna give me freak of the week by marvelous three yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Phew. We talked about got that one. song last night. I got one in. Well, I'm glad you guys had conversations and research before we got here. I write my list and then I come here in the morning. So I have no at least I. Oh, yeah. I, I don't have that. I have I have a piece of paper where I've also drawn the Van Halen logo somewhere as well. You did. Um, <laughs> this is more homework than I've done in the entire time I was ever in high school. Like, you know I what? I'm super pumped about this. I'm going to give out my last one right now. And okay. then I'll be done. Um, and if you, this is a pop punk band, I will tell I know for a fact. And it, I pick all their we'll songs. We'll see every about song, that. Every song, <laughs> <laughs> every song they've ever written I, I could be on my list. But one of my favorites is uh, a song called Pocket Full of Sunshine by the man oh, Molly. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. OK. To fine. me, yeah. to me, they were. Remember, I was in a, a working band when they were a working band and they i remember seeing another band around that time um and i have their cd somewhere they were called ah oh, i won't think of it now it'll come to me but uh molly had it all they 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 to me i could hear how much they love butch walker i knew them of course i i i knew them in their previous band when they had a, a kind of a hair metal band we all grew up together um, I have their cassette, their first cassette that is is raw and kind of hints at what they're going to be. Um, and then by this time, it's fully formed. And it's, I mean, catchy ass choruses, well-written songs, great guitar. One of my favorite voices ever. I mean, Johnny could just flat out sing. They were yeah. great on stage. And as soon mm-hmm. as they got popular, you talk about getting your ass kicked. There's a band that people would be like, oh, no, yeah, you don't like Molly at all because they're not this and they're not that. And they right. just ended up, they, you, in our little area here, in our geographical location, those guys really did polish the whole thing and present it as professionally as anybody did. Absolutely. You know? So that's my last one. And now I'm, I'm bowing out of the pop punk conversation. <laughs> um, oh, you gotta, I, you gotta stay and make fun of us for, uh, oh, the, for what yeah, we for did. the, for the yeah. next weird stuff you're going to say. Yeah. So Weird I don't have any even I don't have any extras either. Just that I liked Blink One Eighty Two, and I thought the Green Day hits were all pretty good too. So they are great. There's all right, so many moving. good singles too, right? Like there's That's so the many thing. singles that qualify as pop punk, but then when you're looking at an album as as its like entire form, it's it makes it really difficult to make those decisions, right? That's why like I went on and on about like what defines a pop right. punk song 
and does this qualify for an album i'm so grateful that you picked albums instead of singles because there's too many uh sugar colt did did really really well i they're not they're not on my list but they're worth like mentioning bayside self-titled even the single portions for foxes by uh rilo kiley that i would qualify that song as a pop punk song but them as a band or them as an album doesn't count right like so many great singles not quite there with the album though what do you got scott all right what do you have have left scott i have three left and i don't know if melissa's gonna give me one of them oh anymore i have like five but i'm gonna lump two of them together and then i'm gonna get in a fight hopefully not with you guys but there is one person on my list that i'm going to lose friends about and i'm (laughs) <laughs> Probably going to do that one next so that I can like end on a high note instead. <laughs> All right. What's your two you're going to lump together? The two I'm going to lump together are um, bands that I don't really listen to that much, but really love. Um, and two great examples of pop punk to me is uh, the newest album by Real Friends called There's Nothing Worse Than Too Late. They got a new singer. His name is Cody Moraro, I believe. Um, sounded very, very similar to the previous singer. But then when they came back and kind of reinvented themselves a little bit, the same as Amorosa did when, well, Amorosa went like totally different genre. But um, Real Friends stayed a little bit true to form with the pop punk. And they just, they embrace that like lightheartedness about the music style itself and about the vocals. But like, they're adults. They're like grown ass fucking adults now. So it's like grown ass adults singing in the same style that, you know, fucking good Charlotte did about rich people. Um, and then a band called Courage My Love. They went a little harder as they got and a little more electronic as as they like worked okay. into their bandom. But the album for now, there's a song called Anchors Make Good Shoes. Uh just classic it's two female vocalists and it's very distinct and i i feel like female pop punk vocals get overlooked a lot because either you have to be super whiny like the boys or if you go too poppy you turn into paramour and then that's not pop punk female voices right. just do different things sometimes and i still think that those qualify and i think courage my love is a really great example of like blending that pop punk sound with a really great strong female singer Okay. I have um I'm this is one I'm you might veto this. Okay. It's a, I believe it's their third record from 2012, the band The Menzingers. Okay. Um the album is called On the Impossible Past. Um they tour the Menzingers are pals with the band Lucero. Yeah. So okay. Lucero this their third record i think it's this their third record is pop punky um but they're not we talked about this last night not all these bands always stick to that style right like fallout boy evolved green day kind of evolved yeah like a lot of these bands change into something else that's just what you do when you get older except you know we're how old and still talking about the same goddamn genre that we did in high school (laughs) so and then i I will not veto it i have um it's a super group, but it's called Me First in the Gimme Gimmies. Yes! And yes. It's Sorry, did Chris I just like, pick out your audio? Uh, Spike, I think, from the Swing and Utters. But they had a record called Love Their Country in like 2006, I think. And okay. they do all yeah. country covers. And it's they do the Dixie Chicks and Willie Nelson and Johnny Cash. And it's phenomenal. I but love it's all that. like punky and they do the eagles they do desperado off it's like a minute and a half song it's it's just <laughs> yes! phenomenal. i so. love i'm a big fan of all those like punk goes acoustic and punk yes. goes pop albums like those those compilations where like pop punk bands and like rock bands will just get together and do like some crazy version of toxic by britney spears and you're like Fuck yeah yes that's like the band cool. strung out doing bark at the moon by ozzy it's killer yeah <laughs> that's and pop punk bands are just so like fun loving sounding right like that's the whole point of this which is so funny that we're all such bloodthirsty like elitist assholes about it like because the whole genre is supposed to be like uplifting about shitty situations and yeah. like supposed to be a fun time and we take it so seriously um yes. 
can I can I lead with that into my one that I know everybody's yeah. gonna hate me for? All right, so John, I'm sorry that you're gonna have a lot of negative comments about what I'm about to say. Um, pop punk bands in general, here's my mini soapbox, uh, have been getting slammed over the last like six to ten years about all their um, guitarists and lead singers and all their bandmates having um, like sex with minors. Okay. It's, it's an ugly topic. Nobody wants to talk about it, but like all of these people are coming forward, like, Hey, this person put me in this position and they were, they were a famous pop punk band. Right. So it's really hard for me. Like I had to disqualify a lot of bands for that reason. Like simply, I'm sorry, I won't even listen to your music anymore. Um, so you take a genre that is already like elitist and bloodthirsty, and then you add a shit ton of controversy and scandal to it and it's this like dying thing right you still have bands like all time low which is still on my list and state champs you have hot mulligan you have all these bands that are doing really wonderful things and not being predators um but they're not really mainstream they're not bringing it to the forefront until um a rapper named machine gun kelly decided to do a pop punk album and everybody's gonna fucking hate me for this and i don't (laughs) care tickets to my downfall was a banger of a fucking album he got travis barker out of retirement and re-kick started yeah. like an entire genre full of a bunch of fucking predators and stuff that wasn't selling anymore and shows that weren't being attended merch that wasn't being bought this guy is so controversial and brought so much attention to that genre that now all of my favorite bands are playing fucking stadium tours like you know what i mean and yep. that deserves credit. It absolutely deserves credit. Even if you don't like him, what he did to get your favorite music from high school back into mainstream uh, cannot be overlooked. And I, I like tickets to my downfall. My, sh- my son showed me that. And he's like, you might like this. And I was like, his voice is a little low and kind of annoying. And then I started listening. I was like, is that, is that Travis Barker? I'm really proud of myself for noted, <laughs> like noticing that that was yeah. his style of drumming. Cause it's so very distinct. Like, it's a great album. I got fucking pumped when I first heard it. Second album, not a fan. And do I listen to it as much anymore? Not really, but I can't tell if that's because I'm ashamed to be a fan of that album and all of my friends hate me for it or if because I'm like kind of growing out of that. Either way, it embraces all of those elements, those key elements of pop punk songs in lighthearted fashion and brings it so far mainstream because of the personality that Machine Gun Kelly is that like, you can't even ignore it, even if you want to. It's polarizing, right. and I don't give a fuck. <laughs> All right. Sorry. <laughs> Let's I have two left, that. and these are my all-time favorite bands. Um, no Use for a Name. Oh, yeah. Uh, the album More Betterness. Any of their albums, That's Leche Con Carne, um, Making Friends. But that band, to me, is a top 10 all-time favorite band of mine no matter what the genre tony sly was god rest in peace um i miss tony sly 41 is too young um yeah and then less than jake yeah less than jake is yeah hello rock view borders and boundaries uh, anthem i don't care which record Early stuff, Losers, Kings, and Things We Don't Understand, all of it. I love Less Than Jake, but uh, No Use for a Name is my number one. And um, just the radio, more betterness is like they were like, they were ready for the radio and how that was missed. Just like Molly, I don't know how some of these bands get missed, but that album is filled with hits. Do you remember when Less Than Jake took Bang Tango on tour? Yes. Yeah. Because the kid was such a fan. Fan, yeah. Was such a huge fan of the band. Joe Listeo, yeah. Yeah, isn't that crazy? It's just... Yeah. yeah. And Less Than Jake does, on Anthem, they do a killer cover of um, Surrender by Cheap Trick. But yeah, There you go. That's just, man, that band, and yeah. no use, just don't get the credit. Chris Shiflett was in no use for about yep. four years. He was on this record, More Betterness. They cover the Pogues on that record. Um, It's just, it's so phenomenal, the the way it starts out. Um, Rory Koff is an awesome drummer who plays on there. Um, he doesn't get enough credit in that world. 
Uh, so yeah, those two bands are just they. Those are the I listen to those two bands uh, so much of this genre. Those are my one and two. That's all right, yeah. Melissa, you got any? You got any? I got. I'll you do got my a couple last two, and they're also my two top favorites. And it's it's a problem, right? Because you're talking about your two like top favorites. So at this point, it's not even albums; it's just bands, right? Is that basically yeah, yeah, what yeah, you're yeah. talking about? Yeah. yeah. Um. So for me, uh, my my top two of the of the genre outside of Butch Walker, forever the uh, king yeah. of pop punk writing. Um, the starting line. Yeah. Uh, the song "The Best of Me." is my favorite song of all time period um that album isn't my favorite starting line uh, album but based on a true story is is my favorite one yep. direction didn't get a lot of credit then they broke up for a while came out with a three song ep and i've always found my way back to that band anytime like i'm looking for like musical nostalgia or there's like comfort food right like the starting line is that band for me so they will always be top. Oh my God. And Kenny Vasoli liked one of my comments on Instagram once and I died, <laughs> died, died. I was like, ah, he knows me. He doesn't fucking know me. I don't care. <laughs> he liked one of my comments and, and I can die happy. Um, and then my other one is all time low. All time yep. low oh, yeah. has embraced the beginning of like mainstream pop punk and that build up. They have, continue to evolve but stay within that genre right they're adding electronic stuff they're adding harder things there's a couple of like screamy songs and they really do bridge that gap between like pop punk and pop rock and like they get they get all these other elements while still somehow maintaining like true to form the album that i picked was don't panic because that was that's not the um it's not their famous album their famous album is so wrong it's right because that's got uh dear maria count me in right everybody knows that song you go anywhere and say that band and that's the song that they come up with. It's a great song. I'm not knocking it. Not my favorite album. I'm liking a lot of their like newer things, but Don't Panic was the one that I listened to front to back and was like, I feel this, but I also still feel like really happy and excited. But like, it's like adult pop punk. I don't know. All time low forever. That's the name of their tour right now, too. It's all time low forever. It scares me. I think they're breaking up. <sighs> <laughs> or or retiring to reappear later. They right. Can, they can come <laughs> be my friends. It's fine. I got dibs on their drummer if he's not doing anything after that band. Mine. <laughs> yeah, that you were right about the, the drummers of the genre, too. They are underrated. I mean, they're really there's a lot going on there. There really yeah. is. There's a lot of a lot of chops and and a lot of those songs are drum driven too. a lot of, them, yeah. are, you know, because the guitars are so, so straight up basic and stacked up. The drums yeah. are really what drives those songs. That's cool. Well, Absolutely. you guys, thank you for letting me come to your party and, and learn about <laughs> punk pop music. I mean, it's been it's I like I said, the stuff I hear on the radio for better or worse, what I consider to be punk pop. It's always been enjoyable. I like those singles a lot. They're all fun. I always think they're well, the production's always killer. The, the yeah. guitars are always stacked up nice, panned nice. I, I've I've ripped even I've ripped stuff off from the genre. I like the little a lot of the octave runs are fun to play mm -hmm. and, and really will fatten up a chorus or something. So yeah, I, I enjoy that stuff a lot. Um again, I it's and by the way, the local band I had was trying to come up with was called Mary's Eyes. And they sounded Never like heard Green Day. Yeah, they okay. were around with Molly, playing shows with Molly and playing at um I can't think of that that bar that all those bands used to play at now and Ten Bells? To, no, it wasn't Ten Bells. It was um oh, crap. It may have burned down. Was that Radio Tavern? Uh, radio? Radio Tavern. Thank you. I watched that burn down. That was crazy. Yeah, yeah that's oh, what it was, wow. it was Radio Tavern. Yep. Yeah. How old are you? I'm I watched the Radio Tavern burn old. Yeah. yeah, that should be a Grand Rapids t shirt, huh? Yeah. <laughs> right. well you guys thank you again melissa thanks for being here and sharing thank your you insight and me. your talent with all of us and um and everybody listening will uh will be watching out and following you and you'll be hosting three open mic nights during the week playing <laughs> two other solo gigs and then playing one with a band and then working oh, a job and and somehow balancing yeah. all of that Oh, and, don't forget uh, my 16-year-old son, my three animals in the house I just bought. It's fine. I don't want to sleep. 
Well, there's nothing <laughs> like stacking up, stacking the deck up for yourself. So I'm sure in your free time, you'll go back and listen to this show. I really Scott, appreciate have, you guys having me. Have Thank links, you. We will have links to Melissa's uh, YouTube and other That's things good. in the show notes. So I Scott, can't wait for always all the a pleasure. I'm gonna get. Oh, yeah. Well, <laughs> Scott, um, you know, Scott is uh, has recently posted me berating him about one of his obscure references. So I get hate mail too. Like, how dare you? <laughs> How dare you actually, the guy whose show it actually is, you're going to criticize for, for his, right. uh, for how he approaches this stuff. But I get <laughs> I to do people that. just take it as this is my opinion and you asked for it. And like, you like what you like. I'm never going to knock somebody for liking what they like. So no. I'm, I'm hopeful no. that people will just respect that I have an opinion and leave it at that. But yeah, right. well, that sounds like the internet. All right. right. Well, you guys, <laughs> thank you both so much. Everybody, we'll see you. Scott, you got any parting words for us? Yeah, whatever's gotten into our sweet little Eddie. Oh, it's nothing, dear. It's probably another one of those adolescent cycles. I believe a child psychiatrist would refer to it as the punk phase. See you later, guys. See you next time, everybody. Thank you.